What's happening everyone, my name is Alex and welcome back. In today's video we are unboxing and taking a first look at the brand new Kubot X20 Pro. So from what I've seen online the back of this phone looks very similar to the back on the upcoming iPhone 11. So we have three cameras on the back there and one of them is an ultra wide lens. So it's gonna be quite interesting seeing how that camera does. Now the phone hasn't been released yet, um, so this phone is not running the final software um, on it and Kubot has asked me not to show you any pictures until they release the final software for it. So I won't be able to show you any pictures in this video, but I will definitely show you pictures um, for the full review, so in a week or so. Aside from that we have a 6.3 inch screen and the phone is powered by the MediaTek Helio P60 that's paired with 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of internal storage. And all that for about $180. And as always, there will be some links in the video's description. And with that being said, let's get this box open and check out the phone. Alright, so on the front of the box, we see the model name on the side here. Um, we see Kubot. And on the back, we can see all the specifications. So everything that I mentioned um, earlier. And with that being said, let's get this thing opened. Alright. So first things first, the phone. On the back there, we have a little sticker that says the X20 Pro. And um, we also have that same camera module that um, we've seen in um, a bunch of leaks for the iPhone 11. I'm not sure which one of them um, is the wide angle lens, but it will definitely be interesting seeing how that does. So the back here could actually be made out of glass. I'm not sure. It could be plastic, but um, it kind of sounds like glass. The frame here seems to be made out of metal and yes, it does look like an iPhone. And of course, at the bottom here, we have um, the Kubot logo. But before we go any further, I think we should just um, take a quick look in the box here. So we have a little user manual, nothing that special about the user manual. And in here we have a USB-C cable and uh, the power adapter. So that's about it, very straightforward for the box. So we'll put the box aside. All right, so the phone itself, on the front we have a sticker that has all the specs once again. So we have a 4000 milliamp power battery, just in case you're wondering. We'll remove this and at the top there I see a speaker and um, a camera. I believe that um, the front facing camera is a 13 megapixel camera. On the left hand side here we have um, the slot for the SIM card and I'm assuming this phone takes an SD card as well. At the top we just have a couple of cuts for antennas probably and at the bottom we have the USB-C port and um, of course one speaker. I'm assuming this has a speaker and one of them is a microphone. And on the right hand side you have the power button and the volume keys. But yes, this looks very very much like an iPhone. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. Hopefully we have some power. Then we do. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set this up and I'll come back once, uh, once I set it up and um, show you the UI and so on. Look at those bezels, very very small around um, the screen. Mm. And there is a screen protector covering the screen which I will remove. Alright, so I will be right back. Alright, so after about half an hour or so, um, I am back. So first of all, the screen. We have very small bezels all around the screen. And in fact, I think these bezels are smaller than the bezels that uh, you'd get on an actual um, iPhone. This is a 6.3 inch screen that has a 1080p resolution and it seems to get fairly bright. Now, I believe that if you actually take this in direct sunlight um, you won't be able to see it that well but for this price um, this is something that um, I was expecting. The, the launcher so the phone is running Android 9 and the launcher is very close to the, the launcher that you would find on, um, on the Pixel phone. So if you swipe all the way up um, you get to your app drawer if you just swipe up a bit you go um, into multitasking. And I like the fact that there are no uh, no apps um, that come pre-installed, only Google apps um, that um, we get on this phone, which is really good because um, a lot of Chinese phones that I've seen in the past had a lot of uh, garbage um, apps, basically. This one here I installed myself just so I can install this, um, this wallpaper. Now, the scores on the Antutu benchmark and the Geekbench 5 aren't that high. So this is the score that we get on the Antutu benchmark. And this is the score that we get on the Geekbench um, 5. So fairly low scores and I assume that if I would have used Geekbench um, 4, this score would have actually been a bit, um, a bit higher. The camera app, as I said before, I won't be able to show you much, but we have um, an AI mod, so an artificial intelligence mod, and basically the camera will change settings based on um, whatever you take pictures of. 
Uh, I won't be able to show you any pictures um, and um, of course there is uh, there is that um, ultra wide lens but if you try to put the phone into that um, ultra wide lens the camera app crashes well it didn't crash this time but um, that's um, what would happen so we have to wait for um, for the final software for this phone so we can actually use um, all the features for the camera app other than that what else can I um, can I show you so um, if I go on YouTube here So yes, we only have one speaker, but um, the speaker does sound um, quite good. The settings app looks just like um, you would find on stock Android because this phone is basically using um, stock Android, unlike um, some other Chinese manufacturers that um, we've had in the past, but a lot of those Chinese manufacturers don't actually exist um, anymore these days. So it's nice to see that Kubot, it's, um, it's still here. Out of that 128 gigs of internal storage, we have about 116 gigs left after um, the operating system and the two apps that um, I installed. So yeah, very straightforward. Um, the only thing I've noticed is the fact that the phone doesn't actually have um, a fingerprint scanner. So you have to use the face unlocking. And I did set up the face unlock and um, it does seem to work um, fairly good. But since um, that's done through the camera, it's going to be difficult at night. So at night, um, the camera is not going to be able to see your face that well and um, you're probably going to have to enter um, your passcode. So that is um, unfortunate, but I guess they tried to copy exactly what um, Apple did. So yeah, this is a first look at the Kubot X20 Pro, which seems uh, like a very nice phone for, um, for its price for about $180. I will follow up um, with a review whenever um, Kubot releases the final software for it because I'm curious to try the cameras and see how, um, how the cameras do. If you have any questions, um, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll try to answer any questions that you may have. Um, if you like the video, don't forget to press that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.